Hi folks, a friend of mine uh, brought me that Moran's 1070 also brought me this Technics SA800 receiver. Um, he says it was blowing fuses. We're going to pop the cover off, take a quick glance around and bring it up on the dim bulb tester and see what we get. Let's dive in. Okay, so the cover slides off. I mistakenly thought the whole thing came off, but these side pieces stay on. And we can get a look down inside here. Um, everything looks pretty clean. I didn't see any loose parts, any wires flapping, anything burned, <clears throat> any parts missing. Uh, everything seems to be secured in pretty well. Let me just bring the camera in a little closer and you can get a better look down in here. It seems to be pretty clean. I mean, there's no dust or dirt or rust. So um, we're going to turn it on on the dim bulb and see what we get. So that is right over here. Oh, oh boy, yeah. We have a problem. Okay, so... First thing I like to do with something like that is just to try and isolate everything the easiest way I can. And looking in here, the driver board plugs in. So what we're going to want to do is remove the driver board and see if the dim bulb still glows brightly. <clears throat> Excuse me. We could have power supply issues. We could have output transistor issues, but the easiest thing for us to do is simply pull this board out. Now, just like the Marantz we just worked on, we have these thermal sensing bias diodes that we're gonna have to remove so we don't rip them off. So I'm gonna take the screws out of those. Looks like there's two screws holding this in. Then we're gonna pull the, um, excuse me, we're gonna pull the driver board out and see if our dim bulb responds any better. Okay, we got our driver board out, so let's see if we have any luck. We'll try the dim bulb test again, and... Oh, that looks a whole lot better. Okay, so we think our problem is most likely on the driver board. I'm going to have to download a service manual schematic, and then we'll take a better look at this. Okay, so I spent a little time with this last night, and then I went to bed. Now... There's a lot to be said for walking away from a trouble. Your subconscious will crank, crank and crank on this in the background. You won't even realize it, even when you're sleeping. And you may wake up and have an approach or even a, an epiphany. But in any event, <clears throat> this is the schematic for the output stage. It's actually just one channel. This is the left channel. And this is one of those good news, bad news, good news situations. Good news is the schematics have the expected voltages printed on it. The bad news is they didn't pick up when the, when the schematic was scanned. But the good news is we can extrapolate voltages and I think it'll help point us to our problem. And indeed, it did. So let me just write some of these in. Now we know at the outputs, we should have zero volts at the emitter. Okay, when everything is balanced between input and output, you should have zero volts here. Now, at the bases, you should have 0.6 volts for our NPNs and for our PNPs. And I, um, I made a mistake here. The way they did the schematics a little odd. Your NPNs are up here, but they're all in one block. So our outputs are actually from here to here. So it's 613, 15, 14, and 16. So this is going to be zero volts here. And at our base, we should be negative 0.6 volts. So we have positive 0.6, negative 0.6. And if we go back through to our drivers, we should have 1.2 and negative 1.2 and on the other channel we should have the same we should have 1.2 and negative 1.2 I didn't quite get the whole driver stage of the right channel but in any event I started to look here 
because this is going to drive the bias too high on the left channel output stage. So what I did was I took the board and I remove the drivers from the left channel. And let's see what happens when we plug that in and turn this thing on. Okay, I have removed those drivers and I plugged the board back in and now when we turn this thing on, it comes out of protection. The problem is definitely in the one channel. And by the way, it looked like I was picking up some FM there. In any event, I'm going to let the uh, power supply discharge, we're going to pull that board out. I'm going to show you what I believe the problem is. Okay, I put the drivers back in and I told you I thought I'd determine what the problem is and I have. Um, somebody was in this before me and they replaced one of these thermally, thermal tracking diodes. I don't know if you can see, there's heat shrink here and um, they had left a lot of bare lead here. I shortened it up. I checked them, but I was not paying attention to the polarity. Yeah, checked okay, but um, once I paid attention to the polarity, I realized that whoever put this in, put it in backwards. I'm going to move the camera so you can see the side of the board here. And they show basically four diodes in series. That's the equivalent, equivalent of what this circuit is. And it was just wired in backwards. Once I took it out and reversed it, now we can turn it on and the dim bulb responds correctly and the unit comes out of protection. <clears throat> I think I've mentioned this before, but when somebody's been in something, all bets are off. Electronics tend to malfunction in a somewhat predictable manner, but people there's no telling. These things won't wire themselves in backwards by themselves. So I'm pretty sure that was the only problem with it, but I'm going to mount the uh, thermal tracking diodes back on the heat sinks, and then we're going to test this thing out and see what it'll do. It's supposed to be 125 watts a channel, and uh, considering how heavy it is, I think it'll make every bit of it. But let's see. Okay, so I've got this connected, but it looks like there's still a problem here. Because look at the way those sine waves are jumping up and down. I think we may have some bad filtering or some hum. Um, let's see. It's definitely noise. Uh, we do get signal out of here. But we're not getting much output. So we're going to have to look through and see what's going on here. In the meantime, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to inject signal directly into the output stages, see if we can separate where our problem is. It's always nice when you have units that have uh, pre-main jumpers that you can take out. So we'll put this in and we'll start it. Oh, 100 millivolts in. And we will just ramp that up and see what we get. Output stage looks rock solid. Okay. We haven't biased the output stage, if you recall. We're getting clipping at the bottom. It would indicate we have some power supply issues because it's clipping at the bottom of both channels before it makes 125 watts. But our main problem seems to be in the rest of the unit. However, we do have it at least producing sound. So it's a good start. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, dig into this a little more. I may make another video. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I'm connected back through the auxiliary output, input, I'm sorry. And um, the jumpiness I'm seeing in the signal 
is because we actually have no output to speak of. I've got the volume control wound up to about 12 o'clock. I'm putting out, uh, let's see here, we'll go to 500 millivolts input. You see we have 0 0.02 watts. We have essentially no output. What you see is negligible. Um, you would barely hear anything coming out of the speaker. So the problems that we have right now are when we're directly injecting into the power amp inputs, we're getting asymmetrical clipping on the negative half when we try to wind it up to full power. And it's only making about 100 watts before that exhibits itself. And the other problem we're having here is we have no input from our auxiliary. What you see is not really input. So I think I'm going to sign this video off here. We're going to have a part two coming up. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you learned something. And um, I also want to remind folks, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, helps me out. Doesn't cost you anything. And uh, as always, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.